Boston, Massachusetts. When you see Boston today, full of modern constructions, famous for the sports, a world reference in higher education, you may not realize that this is first and foremost a historical city. Boston is the birthplace of America's revolution, the war for independence, and so many important moments in American history happened right here. Many people that fought in the war for independence are buried here. In this series of videos, you're gonna see this mix of the old and the new that makes a trip to Boston so charming and memorable. I'm Renata, I'm a journalist. I create travel videos around the world showing some of the top destinations on Earth. Always with my husband, Gordon, who normally prefers staying behind the cameras. <laughs> We're in Boston, the largest city in New England. Capital of Massachusetts. Yes, actually the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's the official name, did you know? Uh, no, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You can also call it Mass. Mass. Mass, yeah. Very mass. Mass. That's a cool. But don't people care about the chowder? Lobster? I'm sure they do. Okay. This is all lobster. Four pounds of lobster. And we're at the commons. No, that's a real mistake. It's common. Boston common. A lot of people say commons, but no. Common. Common. The Common is a great public park in downtown Boston, but more on that later. Mass is one of the six states that form New England. New England is the name of this region in the northeastern United States. Did you know, by the way, that this name New England uh, came before the United States was even formed? Well, of course, because the Englanders came here and they said, oh, this is new. It's New England. Oh, you're so smart. <laughs> No, just logic. You're so smart. And this is where they revolted against the new England. This is where they revolted against the traditional the England. England. The traditional Sorry. England, yeah. The old England, yes. Because they tax a lot. Keep watching to learn more about this history. And did you know, just north of here, there's New France, Quebec, <laughs> Canada. This story is fascinating, and because there are so many places that survived centuries of history, one of the main things to do here in Boston is to walk from place to place. This is a great city to walk around, as long as it's not during winter. So much so that one of the main attractions here is a trail that connects 16 historical sites along 2.5 miles, or 4 kilometers. It's the Freedom Trail. It is so cool because they make it really easy to follow. Look at this. The path is right on the ground. All you gotta do is follow this line. Along the walk, you visit historical churches, cemeteries, battlegrounds, meeting points. Most of the sites are free. The best place to start the Freedom Trail is at Boston Common. This is the oldest park in the United States. And here there's a visitor center right there where you can get a map or you can get more information. Hi. Hi, just taking a look at what you have here. Okay. The map is $3. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. No okay, you can get a map, but it's $3, so get it online, it's free. Boston Common it was created as a common space to feed the cattle, and it was used like that for almost 200 years. Then it became a camp for the British Army, leading up to the American Revolutionary War and for public hangings. Today, everything happens here, from concerts to demonstrations. That summer in Boston, yes, huh? Look at that, yes, but is. imagine during winter. This is probably like an ice skate ring. You can easily spend a nice morning here. Oh, and this right here, this is Park Street. It's the first subway station in the entire United States. It was built in 1897. Right here in front of Boston Common, it's a pedestrian only street. Look at how charming. This is Winter Street. A lot of cool shops here. Looks like there are some restaurants too. But for now, let's see a little bit more of the Freedom Trail. Right here around the square, you already find two important sites. This is Park Street Church, known for supporting abolitionist causes, meaning for the end of the slavery. This was the tallest building in Boston when it was built. Everyone would see it when they entered the city. And it's still an active church. The church is from 1804. Hi. Uh, you're welcome to your guide, just returning. 
well, they give you a guide here at the cemetery to help you find the tombs. They just ask you to return it. This is the granary burying ground. Many people that fought in the war for independence are buried here. There are about 2,300 tombstones here, but they calculate that uh, between three and 5,000 people are actually buried here. Cool. Yeah, more than the tombstones. Oh, yeah? Victims of the Mass Massacre. Mm-hmm. Sam Adam. Mm-hmm. Fanu, Fanu Hall. Yeah, and Paul Revere. Paul Revere. Do you learn about Paul Revere in school in Canada? No. You only learned about him here when mm. you got here? No. Remember, they had a cartoon, a Saturday cartoon? mornings. Oh, yeah? They talked about history. Canada? Come on, come function, watch your function, yeah. So you learned about, about him them. in Canada, not in school, but on TV. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin was from Boston, and his family members are buried here, except him. He's buried in Philadelphia. Philadelphia was the main city in the U.S. at the time. Oh, he created this himself. The guide, look at this. His name is Jimmy Cole. He created this free guide here. And he has a website explaining more. So look at this. If you want to learn more, check out his website, historybuddy.com. It's a very detailed guide. Good job, Jamie. Uma pergunta pro Renata. Go ahead. Si. Quantos letra S in Massachusetts? Letras S. How many S? Five? If you want. How many? That's close enough. How many then? You spell it with five. Some people six. <laughs> and you? Four. <laughs> Massachusetts. Four S's. Not five, not six. Four. So you were right? What? You were right? What's that? Is that I didn't what you're hear saying? that. I didn't hear that. What? <laughs> you were right? Ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> wow, how beautiful. This is the Massachusetts State House. This is one of the oldest continuously running state capitol buildings in the U.S. Also considered one of the most beautiful and magnificent public buildings. It's a shame we cannot fully see it right now. We arrived during refurbishment. So you see that gold on? Yeah. That's all gold. Gold? Gold. Oro. 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 They had to cover during World War II because they were afraid of bombings. The Germans, they so would come they, here all this way and bomb us. You never bombings, know. Yeah. It's war. Yeah. Yeah. Pearl Harbor. They have free tours here during the week. So the Freedom Trail continues that way, but we're taking a detour here. Right? Yes, and we'll break it. We'll break it up into multiple videos. Yes, that was Gordon's idea actually, and there is a reason behind that. Multiple reasons actually. One, um, history overload. You know, I hear from a lot of people that uh, if you follow all the 16 sites, by the end of the day, you're really tired uh, of history. So we thought it would be better to break in different uh, days. Two, if you follow the crowds, everybody will be going together from place to place. This way you can start in a different site tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. And three- Wouldn't you call that people overload? People overload, yes. Yeah, the information <laughs> overload, people overload. Yes. And now, <laughs> Three, geographically, there's stuff to see. So you can break it up and enjoy and take a leisure walk. Now, for instance, we're in a very charming neighborhood right behind the state capitol building, and it's called Beacon Hill. This house here belonged to the richest man in Boston. His name is Harrison Gray Otis. Yeah, Otis, like the elevator the richest family in the early 19th century. That's the last freestanding house here. Everything else is condos. And today's most prominent resident lives just around the corner when he's in town. We're talking to someone who lives here, and he just told us that if we're lucky, we can spot former presidential candidate and senator from Massachusetts, John Kerry. John Kerry owns a house here, and I know that it's one with the American flag in front, so there are two. Could be this one here, or just over there. I read online that all these uh, lamp posts here are lit by gas, but they look like electricity, right? Yeah, they're electricity. It's funny. This is one of the few streets that maintain the original cobblestones here. 
Yeah. And you see why there are very few streets left. It's, it's really hard to walk. Yeah. Imagine for a horse riding or for driving. Forget it. This is for this, to clean your shoes. Well, at the time that there were horses on the streets, what do you think people were stepping on? Full of restaurants over here. This is like the commercial center of Beacon Hill. It is so charming. The journey is not ours to control. We're arriving here at another park. This is Public Garden, and it's just beside Boston Common. Boston Common is over there, and Beacon Hill right behind. Everything's so close. I love it. Another amazingly beautiful park. Whenever a local team wins or is in the final of an important championship, uh, the main duck wears the shirt <laughs> of the team. The public garden was the first public botanical garden in America. Look at that, baby. It's one person doing the job for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to lose some pounds there. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's an easy job. One person, 10 passengers. Not sure it's that easy. It's more like 15 passengers. Yeah. See that bridge over there? That was the world's shortest functioning suspension bridge. It was. It's not a suspension bridge anymore. It was converted. They leave it like this just for decoration. That was in 1867, and it was converted in 1921. Cool. So how do you feel like in the mini Golden Gate? I hope there's no earthquake. I hope not. But it's not a suspension bridge anymore, so don't worry. Oh, okay, we're solid. But it's also it's the smallest in the world. If we fall, look at this. Not no, it's that only high. two feet deep. <laughs> the park is probably one of the most common places here for wedding pictures. So many brides and grooms here. They're so tame, huh? And they're big, long tail. Massachusetts bikes. If you don't want to walk all over, look at this. You could rent one of these bikes over here. $2.95 for a single trip, up to 30 minutes, or $10 for unlimited two-hour rides during 24 hours. Wow, look at this place right here. This is the place to be on a weekend. It's like a couple of food trucks here. Wow, from park to park. But this one here is on the waterfront. This is the Esplanade. Boston is very famous for the waterfront. The water surrounds the city, so it's almost 43 miles of parks. Almost 43 miles like this. Imagine this going on for 43 miles, parks and the views. Did you expect to find so many parks in Boston? More. More? Yeah. Oh, come on. More. What other city has more parks than this? Park City, Utah. <laughs> Not sure about that. Compared to a big metropolis like Boston? Yeah. Look at what a perfect place for the sunset. Remember sunsets in Boston? Just a few blocks away, and we're now in one of the most expensive streets in the world. This is Newberry Street. The street is famous for the high-end shops, high-end restaurants, the cafes. It is really nice. Now, again, for you to understand where we are, the Public Garden and Boston Common are right over there. Everything's so close here. Cheers. We're gonna try a typical sandwich in Boston. Oh, look at that. This is all lobster. Four pounds of lobster. Oh, that's a big piece. You won't like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trust yeah. Me, you won't like. Get something else. Yeah. Show me what's there, baby. Wow. Tuna, cucumber. 
avocado. Okay, looks so good. Healthy. <laughs> Even healthier, though. You know, <laughs> they live long life. It's a photo. You miss Japan, huh? I missed it. I didn't get to go. Yeah. Only Hanata. Wow. They told me I had two options to eat. Either cold with mayonnaise or hot with butter. I went for hot with butter. And um, it is really good. Now the bun, the bun is hot, but the lobster is cold. So it works really well. It's really good. Look at how much lobster. Wow. I think I never ate so much lobster in one dish. No? No. Amazing. Lobster is very common and traditional here in Boston because they catch right here. It is super fresh, so you gotta try either the sandwich or a meal, but don't let it go. Why the knife? Oh yeah, I ended up yeah eating my sandwich here with knife and fork because the pieces of lobster were really big, so I cut everything. I'm not sure this is how you're supposed to eat, but for me it worked. <laughs> and yes, it was really good. Lobster is not cheap, so just keep that in mind. And one thing that was interesting here, it is market price, meaning the price fluctuates according to the catch, according to the season, to the quality. Today, the sandwich was $20. Don't know if that's good or bad. This is Newberry Street, Back Bay, and the Esplanade. Here's the Public Garden and Boston Common. And Beacon Hill up here. You can do everything here walking. Isn't it an extremely charming city, baby? Very charming. Very charming. Wait until you see the waterfront and more of Freedom Trail, Yeah. right? That's coming up in the next video. Make sure you subscribe not to miss it.